today. Voltaire said that in his lifetime that the Bible would become extinct and that it would be placed in a museum somewhere. It wasn't long after that, be careful what you say, it wasn't long after that that he died. And the very house that he lived in, uh, they, they put a print shop in there, in his house. And guess what? The first thing they printed off of the print shop, the printing machine, inside of this French uh, atheist home, the Bible. Amen. You'll not defeat it. Amen. You cannot crush it. Amen. You cannot eliminate it. It will be what we stand before God and he judges our lives with. The word of God liveth and abideth forever. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 119, you'll find it over there. If you keep reading this whole division, of course it is the longest division in all the Bible. It says in verse 89, I believe it is, it says forever, O Lord, is thy word settled in heaven. Amen. So it was first of course, uttered by our God there in heaven. And then, of course, God gave inspiration. The God-breathed words. Theos, the God-breathed words. God spoke to man, holy men of God, spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit of God to pen these words for us. They're inspired, they're inerrant, they're infallible, and they're forever. And I thank God that we have a copy of the Word of God. Can you imagine being in one of these language groups that do not have a word of God for their language? I think uh, how, how privileged we are, how uh, honored we should be that when we come to God's house, everything that is done here, the singing, the praying, uh, the, perform the, the practice of the choir, everything, is done in such a way that God, the, the implantation of God's word in our heart, that it would go on with us throughout the rest of the week. I love verse number 11 of our text this morning. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. The Bible says that I might not sin against thee. Yeah. Isn't it amazing when we hide not God's words, but uh, other kinds of words that are not so choice, that are not so nice. When we hide bitterness, when we hide resentment, when we uh, hide anger uh, down in our heart, things come out that are not godly. You know, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And so when we hide God's words in our heart, you know, somebody said that I just slipped and it came out, Pastor. No, it didn't. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're planting bad seeds, if you're planting bad thoughts in your mind and in your heart, guess what's going to come out? Input, you put in bad, output, outcomes bad. And so that's why we have to hide God's word in our heart. The shortest division in the whole Bible is 118. Are you listening? Uh, the longest division in the Bible is 119. 118, the middle verse is verse 8. The very middle of the Bible, please no one uh, be getting up. These are twins. They're an exception. They're just born. They need mom's attention right there. Thank you, mom. She brought them to church today. Amen. First Sunday at church. Amen. I said the first Sunday ever, and they're at church. Amen. That's a pretty good record already, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Try to make it every Sunday. If the, if the twins got here, I think they're all four pounds each. I think we can make it. By the way, thank you for your uh, thoughts at my uh, birthday time. I, I've got the birthday bowl this morning. I've eaten so much. Y'all forgive me. God's already forgiven. I ask you to forgive me. I put this suit on this morning. I said, honey, I believe I've got the birthday bulge. <laughs> you'll, you'll know about it. My daddy said you'll know about it uh, later on. But anyway, uh, 118 verse number 8 says it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Here's a question for you this morning. Has man ever let you down? Quite a bit, huh? 
But here's one good thing. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And the very bullseye, I'm talking about the very center of the Bible, is this phrase, the Lord. That's right. The Lord is the center of the universe. The Lord is the center of the Bible. The Lord needs to be the center of your life. And when you get the Lord centered where he should be in your life, everything else will work out, folks. When you get your life lined up with this Bible, that's why it's in the dead center of the Bible, where you know how important. Every one of these 176 verses in this division of Psalms talks about the Word of God. How important is the Word of God in your life? Someone here recently told me this. They said, Pastor, I'm just not in the Word like I know I should be. Dot, dot, dot. And I was thinking, you know, my mind was racing. I was thinking, I hope they correct that. Because that's a dead end street. I've been on that street before in my life when the Word of God did not have priority. And I will tell you, there's some calamity on that street. There's some confusion on that street. There's some chaos uh, uh, on that street. Our country is in chaos today. They burned the Bible in Portland, Oregon this weekend. How terrible. How terrible. I think it's a travesty when our country, listen, the Bible says that a, the righteousness exalts a nation. But sin, the scripture says, sin is a reproach to any people. Yeah, that's right. How do we even know uh, what is right and wrong? How do we even know that we're in sin? The Bible. That's right. It's the mirror of God's love. And thank God it shows us. You know, a lot of people don't like getting in the Word of God because it shows us who we really are. Yeah. It, it shows us all of the uh, the defects. It shows us all of the blemishes and the blunders. And here's the best part of it all. God loves us in spite of the boo-boos and the blunders. Amen. What an amazing God. Amen. 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 I tell you, I, I, I don't know about you, but it just seems like each and every week God blesses me more and more. Amen. I see God at work in our church. I see God at work in our lives. I'm seeing answer to prayer. Is anybody getting any answers to your prayers? Amen. Amen. I see God moving. We're living a special time. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, oh, I wish I wasn't living now with all of these pandemics. Can I say that this is nothing new? There is nothing new under the sun. But look, the Bible is coming alive because we are right there at the doors. We are at the threshold of eternity, and the Word of God is becoming more and more precious to me, and I hope that it's becoming more precious to you. Last week, we brought a sword into the pulpit, the sword of the Spirit. It is the Word of God. Amen. Today, I want the Word of God to be hidden in our hearts. I'm going to preach from verse number 11, but I'm going to use all these other verses surrounding it. Since thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. Amen. So we have to be so cautious. Why? Have you ever considered how sins affect the overall effect of your downline? You realize when you sin, it's not just you that sins. It just don't affect you. But your spiritual DNA, those that are behind you, whether they're kin to you or friends with you or acquaintance with you, your life affects other people. Okay. No man is an island. No man liveth nor dieth to himself. We affect each other. Amen. And the body of Christ, the local assembly of baptized believers, we all affect one another. That's why it's good to be in the spirit of God. Amen. Galatians 5, 16, walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the Spirit of God, here's what you need to do. When you get in the Word of God in the morning, ask God to lead you with the Spirit so that you will understand what God wants you to do for that day. 
So you will understand the Word of God more perfectly. It's the Word of God that transforms your life. We start out like a little worm. Y'all ever seen this happen where the worm, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it finds its way somehow into this little cocoon. And inside this cocoon, no one knows what's going on in there, but scientists say that there's perhaps some silk that is spinning while it's in there. And while we're here on planet Earth and we seem like we're just spinning, okay? We seem like we're in a spiral. Sometimes we're in a downward spiral. And we don't think anything ha is happening. God's, just, God's still working. He's still in charge. He's still on the throne. And when He finishes with your life, He's still working on me. How about you? Amen. When He's finished with your life, uh, like the little worm that comes out of that cocoon, and it's transformed, metamorphosis is taking place, and it is a different creature. That's right. It leaves the gravity pull. It takes flight. It moves like it's never moved before. One day we're going to take flight from it. Amen. We're going to be totally changed. I'm talking about in the image of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about mind, body, and soul. I'm talking about we will be different. We'll be like He is Scripture says we'll be that as our Savior. As, and, and the Bible says comfort one another with these words. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So shall we ever be with the Lord. That's right. Does that mean anything to you? It should. Amen. That's why we should hide God's word in our heart. Listen, I, I don't want to have to sit the first few million years in heaven sitting at the feet of Jesus learning things I should have learned here on the planet. I heard it best said this week that God is not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. God expects us. He gave us his word. He preserved his word here on this planet. He expects us to learn his word. Thank you for all those that studied, stayed uh, and came early for Bible study. And it was nice to see the excitement. It was nice to see people walking up and down the halls. It was good to see the class is filled. You know what that tells pastor? It tells pastor one thing. People are hungry for the word. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a good class. I mean, we really had mm -hmm. a good class. First of all, this morning, a blessing to those who walk in the way of the law of the Lord. Verse number one. Is your Bible capital letter there? Mine, the whole word is capitalized. Bless. <laughs> you want to bless life? You want to live an undefiled life in the way in which you go? Walk with God. Walk early, as Adam did in the cool of the day. Walk with God. Walk with his word. See, these people are undefiled. Their conscience is not defiled. Their mind is not polluted, amen. And they're living their life to please the Lord. Well, there's a real blessing. Amen. I can't describe in human vocabulary what it's like to live in the will of God. I, I, but I do know this, Ephesians 5, 17, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You can't know. Mm -hmm. You can't be there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I can just best describe it to you that when you are there, you'll know you're there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There's, there's no question marks in your mind. There, uh, there, it's like a neon sign. It's like a big billboard. It, it's like a totally different state that you're in. I, I'm talking about uh, I can't put it into words. I was there this week. That's all I can tell you. Amen. I, I visited with my dad. The last words my dad said before they transferred him back to the VA hospital, which he, he'll be in lockdown now. I won't be able to see him. Is this. He, sometimes he's a little fuzzy. But the last words he said was, I love you too, son, walking out the door. Amen. <laughs> all the way home, God was speaking in my heart. Hey. I can't describe it. I can't put it in words. I, I just took time out from Biloxi, Merritt Hospital. I just drove all the way down Highway 9, all the way to 49. And then uh, I was looking at that beautiful water. I was looking at the scenery. And I was thanking God. Amen. I was thanking God. Amen. Thanking the Lord for our little life down here on planet Earth. Thanking God. Amen. Just thanking God. It was as if God was speaking to the innermost parts of my heart. He was saying this. It's a new chapter in your life. It's just a brand new chapter in your life. Your dad preached for over 60 years. 
It was almost as if he was saying something so deeply, I cannot put it into words, but it was something like this. It's time for whatever, I don't know. But it, it was God speaking to my heart. The Spirit of God was saying, it's time. Amen. Amen. Have you ever wanted to do something so bad, whatever it was, and then when the moment came, you were ready for it, and it happened just like you had dreamt? Boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy. How important is it then to be in the will of God, studying the word of God? Did you know God has a blessing? The first word, I may not even get through my points this morning, but the first word of Psalm 119 is the blessed life or a blessing for you. Have you ever, have you ever wanted the blessing of God, but perhaps you were not prepared? And when the blessing came your way, it had to bypass you because you were not prepared mentally, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. And it went to someone else. Did you know if you don't want a blessing, God will pass you. He'll give your blessing to someone who's ready for it. Right. I don't want to turn down any of the blessings of God. I know you don't intentionally want to turn down any of the blessings of God. But church, let's be ready. Let's be ready. I don't want to be like that fig tree that Jesus passed. It wasn't producing any fruit and he cursed the fig tree. It didn't produce anything anymore. It was dead. Right. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be Amen. dead. I don't want to. There's too many dead Christians in this old sinful world. Yeah. I want to be alive. God's Holy Spirit quickens us and makes us alive. Then look at number two here. I want you to see this. Not only is there a blessing promise, but notice it says, those who are walking in his ways do not commit iniquity. Look at it. Uh, verse number three, I should say. They also do no iniquity that walk in his ways. You know, we should, we should search for direction from God. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways. Amen. Amen. In all thy ways. What does it say? Say it again. Acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct your paths. I believe the Bible. Amen. If you need direction, you come to the right place this morning. Amen. If you need direction, the very first place I would go is the Word of God. If you need answers, may God give you the answers. Amen. Don't go to a psychic hotline. Don't go to the tarot card reader. Don't, don't go to some uh, tomfoolery. You know, Saul tried that. He went to the witch of Endor. She gave him an answer. But because he was disobedient, he didn't, he didn't get the answer he wanted. He suffered because he went to some of these psychics. He went to some of these in the occult. They have powers. But may I say, their power is not like God's power. God has omnipotence. He has all power. And Jesus said, all power is given to me in heaven and in did you know you can get plugged into God's power and you'll never be the same? So, preacher, I don't know if I would have the strength, that I would have the courage to live the Christian life. If God saved my soul, I don't know that I could live the Christian life. A lot of people think that. They're thinking that because they've never been plugged into God's power. When God plugs you into his power, you can do all things. Yeah. You, can live, you can't live it in your flesh. You'll never be able to do it. But with God, all things are possible. He makes the impossible possible. Am I speaking too fast in here this morning? No, I'm not from the north. I'm from the deep south. Tell Brother Johnny that when you see him. He's, he's the northern train family. We have to pray for the northern part of the family, and we have to pray for the southern part of the family. Sister Julianne's here this morning. We have to pray for the western side of our family. They're growing. Did y'all see little um, G-Man? I call him G-Man. Grayson, did, did y'all see your, Look, a lot of people go to the gymnasium to get muscles like my grandson. He was born. The only muscle I have is table muscle right now. I'm going to have to get it off. You'll get that later on. But did you see what God said? That these people would not commit, a, uh, commit iniquities if they were walking in the ways of the Lord. Psalm 66, verse number 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord 
will not hear me. Yeah. Isaiah 59, verse 2. My sin is separated from me, between me and my God. So when God doesn't hear your, it's not that he doesn't hear your prayer. He intentionally does not hear or answer, I should say, your prayer because he's wanting you to get your life lined up with the word of God. Amen. He will. If I regard it in my heart, the Lord will not answer me. He's waiting on something. What is he waiting on? He's waiting for you to get right with him. And the only way you can get right with God is to read his word. The question is today, the, of the things that we do that we don't want to do, the things that we say that we should not say, that the, the people we walk with and associate with that we should not have associations with, and these heinous crimes that people commit against God, against the church, against uh, God himself. <laughs> Listen to me, my friend. They would never have been done had we stayed close to God in the word of God. We all know that's true. We all know what a Christian is supposed to be like. In Psalm number 51, David had committed the great transgression against God and said, O oh Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. He said, Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Amen. He asked for forgiveness. God gave it to him. Amen. This child that was born out of wedlock, God took his life. It was terrible. But, you know, God's judgment is just. Can I show you the goodness of God and the forgiveness of God and the love of God and David and Bathsheba's life? What they did wasn't right. But this is what I said a while ago, that God, in spite of the boo-boos and the blunders, God knows how to bless Amen. a person's life. Who wants to line up with this book right here? The second son who was born legitimately Amen. At this point, to David and Bathsheba, do you know who he was? Oh. The wisest oh. man who ever lived outside of Jesus Christ. That's right. God knows how to level the scale. Amen. God knows how to bless your life. Satan's been taking things from you. The thief cometh not but the steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that you might have life and you might have it more. God wants to bless you. God wants the abundant life for you. God wants you to be a victorious, abundant life Christian. But you have to line up. You have to line up with God's word. So, preacher, I just don't think God's been answering my prayer right now. You need to line up. I, I, I just don't think that I'm in a place to be blessed like we need to line up, church. Amen. Amen. We need to line up. Now's a good time to get our houses in order, don't you think? Amen. Thirdly, I must hurry. We desperately need to have our ways directed. Verse number five. Oh, I like that when that O is there. You know, that's coming straight from the heart. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. So by keeping the statutes or the ordinances or the word of God, listen, have you ever felt like maybe you were down in a bog, maybe you were uh, in a fog, maybe you were a little behind spiritually, you needed direction. God says here, you'll never need direction if you stay uh, planted, verse number 5, in the ways uh, of the Lord and keep the statutes of our Lord. So direction is offered. Oh, we might not always want it. Some are saying today, I'm so busy, Lord, I don't have time for your way in my life. What if the Lord were to say that? I'm too busy for you. He never says that. He's the most, he's the busiest person in all the universe. But yet he has time for us. Are you kidding me? Amen. That's a lame excuse to say we don't have. Thank you for being here this morning. Amen. That's a lame excuse to say I don't have time for the Lord, his will, his way for my life. Uh, I mean, look, uh, uh, aren't you glad he's not too busy for us? Amen. Then I want to say, verse number six, we don't want to bring shame on the name of Christ, our church, or our family. Look, it says, then shall I not be ashamed when I respect it. To all of thy commandments. You have respect for God's word, you have respect for yourself. You have respect for God's word, you have respect for uh, the other authorities in your life. You have respect for God's Amen. word, uh, you will have respect for your neighbor. Amen. Praise God. Do you love your neighbor? Do you love even your enemy? Someone help me. How do we accomplish this? How do we accomplish to live a life in such a way that we don't bring shame or reproach upon the name, especially of our Lord Jesus Christ? 
We do this when we have respect for God and His Word. We do this when we have respect to, for what He says for us to do. Listen, we should not even take into account any of these other thoughts. You know, there's many voices that are in the world. And if we listen to them, the Bible says for us to try the spirits, plural, that are in the world. 1 John 4, verse number 1. We're to test them. We're to scrutinize them. We're to sift them with the word of God. So I'm saying, let's not bring shame. Let's have respect. Uh, then fifthly, notice what one begins to really do when we line up. Verse number seven, I will praise thee with the brightness of heart. When shall I have learned thy righteous judgments? You ever notice the praise barometer in your life goes way down whenever you get away from God's word? And the closer you get to God, the closer you get to God's word, it seems like God increases your ability to praise the Lord. I'm not just talking about with your lips now. I'm talking about with your lifestyle. You're praising God. You're giving God glory. You're giving Him praise. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. I'm saying when we learn God's righteous judgments, uh, we have to know what brings the wrath of God, and we also have to know what brings the blessing of God. Thus, to receive blessings causes us, when we do receive Answer prayer. When we do receive, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the blessings of God, we need to praise the Lord. Amen. We need to give Him praise. Here's another good time when you need to praise the Lord. When you're totally devastated. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. I mean, look, when you when, when you can't sense God and your prayers don't go any higher than the ceiling, you know what I do? I break out and I shout. Because He inhabits the praises of His people. Amen. You'll show up. I'm not talking about good in the flesh now. But you just praise God in your own little way, however you can, wherever you are, when you cannot sense the presence of God, and he'll be right there beside you. Amen. It's happened to me so many times. And then God will not forsake us, and we should not forsake the word of God. We find this in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5. And if you look at the linear continuance of the verb there, it is this. Not, not that just he will never leave us nor forsake us. It's not like that. It's not written that way. It's more like this. I will never, no, 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 never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. God will never lie to us. <laughs> He'll be there for you. Sometimes he has to correct us. He's not doing that to hurt you. Excuse me, young man right there. Excuse me. He's disturbing the service. Thank you. God's not trying to hurt you when he corrects you. God's trying to help you. Amen. Have you ever been somewhere and he got your attention? Amen. And he knew it was the Lord. Amen. Some people are saying this. I'm waiting on the Lord to tap me on the shoulder. I'm waiting for him to get my attention. I wouldn't want that. God can bring a lightning strike. Amen. Look, we shouldn't be waiting on the Lord to tap us on the shoulder and let us know it's our time or our turn. Okay? Right. He's already come to us. He's waiting for us to come to Him. Yeah. He said, Come to me, all you that labor. Heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. Learn of me, and you shall find what? Rest unto That's peace. Some people are seeking peace. But well, listen, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 3, the scripture says that he will keep our hearts in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. So God will never forsake us. Listen, we, we abandon uh, the things of God, our Bible readings, church, prayer altars, revivals. We're having a revival come up. I hope you'll be here. August the 19th is in your bulletin. Preacher from North Carolina, a friend of mine. Uh, he always feeds me the word of God. But we just need to get with God. Everything else will line up when we get with God. Amen. He needs to become real in our heart. And look, just to be clean. Look, when I leave the church doors every Sunday, I don't want to be cleaner. When I leave the church doors on Sunday morning, I want to be clean. Amen. How are we clean, church? Someone tell me. The Bible says in John 15 and 3, we're clean through the word. There's been times I came to the church and, uh, you, you know, it, it's just a clutter. It, it, it's just stress. It's frustration. 
It's all the above D. Has anybody been there this week? I felt all that pressure. I felt like I was in a vice grip. Have you been there this week? But when the Holy Spirit comes into the assembly of believers and he touches our hearts, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I feel like I'm up on the mountain this morning. Are you there with me? He's with us today. And I want to say lastly, I'm trying to hurry through. I had eight points this morning. So, look, then the word of God becomes precious enough for us to hide it in our hearts. Okay? We'll hide God's word in our hearts. It's one thing to read the word of God. But it's another thing to know it and love it so much that the Holy Spirit could speak to your heart and you, look, he will bring to remembrance the things that you studied in your prayer time, in your quiet time with the Lord. The Holy Spirit, listen, he wants to illuminate our hearts and minds and transform us in the image of Christ. How does he do that? Through the Word. Through the Word. So we can use scriptures. <laughs> There's going to be some battles this week. I pray that something the Lord has given pastor to give you, you'll use that against the devil. <laughs> He's coming against us. You know that. Amen. So why wouldn't we want to be under the Word? Look, the Word of God will protect us like that sword I had last week. Some people got scared. These guys were the quietest I've ever seen. In all my, I, I didn't hear a, a Baptist grunt out of any of them. Amen. This, this right I've trained to say it wrong. Amen. But look, God's Word will protect us like that sword. I, I mean, the, the Word of God, listen, it, it, It'll bring power in our life. Uh, it'll bring protection in our life. Uh, uh, it, it'll bring a, a continual presence of God in our life. Perpetuity is a good word. God brings all these things in our life. These are sacred things. These are sacred moments. Uh, and the blood of Jesus and the word of God that comes out of our mouth. You know, these things that come flying out of our mouth, these are things that we hide in our heart. Let it be the word of God. Amen. Let it be the word of God. What's the first thing that you think of? What word comes out of your mouth when someone mistreats you or berates you or belittles you or tries their best to say all manner of evil against you falsely? What comes out of your mouth? Is it a good word or a bad word? Let me say something. Yeah. It'll help you. Let me just say something. It'll help you. If you hide the word of God in your heart, the first thing that comes out of your mouth will not be a bad word. It's easy to be a Christian during the good times. It's easy. <laughs> it's the hard times that best describe and define your Christian character. Amen. Right. We need to rejoice in the Lord that he's kept us thus far. That's right. We're right in his hand this morning. He's got the whole world in his hand. Amen. He keeps us by the power of God. He keeps us through the word of God. He keeps us so that we'll praise His holy name when we come in company together and we sit down together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, friend. Listen, rejoice! Yeah. Your name is in the book of life. Amen. There's another book. Not just this book, but there's a book in heaven. Your name is either in that book or it's not in that book. Today, if you're not saved by the grace of God, listen, we could all be burned like bacon in hell this morning. We ought to be thankful. You better be sure, and I mean 100% sure, that your name is in the book of life. Whosoever's name is not found written in the book of life, Revelation 20, verse number 15, should be cast into the lake of fire. That's right. Now, preacher didn't make that up to scare anybody. God said that. Amen. How much more should we believe it if God said it? Amen. I believe the Bible. Amen. I believe that it is indestructible. Amen. I believe that if we'll just read and reverence and respect the Word of God, our likeness, and we are saved by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. No man can be saved apart from the Word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Don't you downplay church. Don't you downplay the preaching of God's Word. Don't you walk out of here and say, I'll never go hear that loud mouth preacher again. Hey, you can you, you can be against all the rhetoric, you can be against all the loud preaching you want. Amen. But I promise you one thing, you like the final product. 
Right. Right. You, you like seeing those little children raised in the church and Amen. being raised up to love the Lord. Their behavior is a little better than the devil does. Amen. I said I wouldn't trade my life for a life lived for Satan and all this world. Amen. Right. Hide God's word in your heart. Look, do, do it quickly. You're right with him. You need God in your life, and you know it. If you're, if you're not saved here this morning, well, turn your eyes upon Jesus today. Amen. Fix, fix yourself. Fix your life. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. God's not letting me shut that Bible for some reason. But just as surely as I shut it, I can open it up again. Amen. Tonight we'll meet again to hear a portion of God's Word read and expounded upon. I'm not the best preacher in the world, but I promise you this. I search for messages that God stops me in this book to give you, my people. Amen. To feed you. The Bible says, feed the flock of God. Amen. I hope you've been fed this morning. Amen. I hope you've been encouraged this morning. Amen. I hope that you're consistently reading the Word of God yourself. Amen. And you know all this church service is. It's just a pep rally to get you more encouraged to do what you know you ought to do. We all praise God while we're here. Amen. My, my, my. Soon and very soon. We're going to see the King of Kings. Amen. And the Lord of Lords. You say, how do you know that preacher? <laughs> I've read it in the Bible. Yeah, that's right. I've read it in the Bible. Hey, don't get too awfully concerned about all this crazy stuff for me. I don't watch it. I'm reading. I'm not watching anything. I'm reading Amen. the Bible. I know what's going to happen. I'm getting my life right with the Lord so that when it does happen, he can say, well done. Amen. Amen. I want you to read the Bible. I want you to read it and reread it. Read it and reread it. Read it and look, it'll be more uh, close to home where you live than the newspaper will. It, it'll be so up to date. <laughs> it'll be so real to life that you won't be able to describe it. Yeah. Woo! Let's bow and shout. Father in heaven.